So we have to look at our fears and find out what is fear anyway? What is it all about? What are we afraid of? And what impact is it having on the choices and decisions and the creations uh, for which we have made ourselves responsible? The biggest problem on the planet today is fear. It's been a problem for a long time, but it's a huge problem now. It's getting bigger every day, and the reason that fear is a problem, of course, is that it affects everything. Everything we think and say and do, all the decisions and choices we make, all of our reactions, all of our responses, everything that we're experiencing can come from only one of two places. Conversations with God has made that very clear to me. We're either coming from love or we're coming from fear. And my observation is that most people, most of the time, and myself, more than I would like to acknowledge. So we, we have to fear. look at our fears and find out what is fear anyway? What is it all about? What are we afraid of? And what impact is it having on the choices and decisions and the creations uh, for which we have made ourselves responsible? By the way, that's one of the first fears that there is, the fear of being responsible, the fear of uh, placing ourselves in a position of responsibility for all that we are creating. So fear is the first aspect of the human experience, as I understand it, uh, that we need to work very hard uh, to heal, and I might even say to transform. You transform fear, uh, and you transform the world. Now let's take a look at what it is that we're afraid of. First of all, as I observe it, we're afraid of life itself and so much that goes on in life. We're afraid of life because we're afraid of death. Conversations with God says that all fear, ultimately, is a fear of death. If you're not afraid to die, then you're not afraid to live. But how can you not be afraid to die? Well, you cannot be afraid to die if you understand what death is, and as a result of that understanding, you understand what life is. The, the wonderful book, Home with God, in a life that never ends, explains all this in extraordinary detail talks about the moment of our death, the process of death itself, and the reason that we're experiencing life uh, as we are on this planet. I, I would suggest that anybody who wants to know more about this, uh, this particular subject take a good look at that book. It's very difficult after reading that text to be afraid at any deep level of, of dying. And when that fear goes away, as I said, then fear of life disappears as well. We're afraid of nothing and no one because, and there's a very good reason why, see all fear is based on the idea that we need something. That's what fear is really. You want to know what fear is defined? The definition of fear is the thought that we are not going to be able to have something we think we need. It's as simple as that. The person who doesn't need anything has no fear of anything. When I don't need anything from you, I don't, I don't fear you. When I don't even need my own life, in a sense, when I don't think that I need this particular version of life in this particular physical form, then I'm not afraid even if you kill me. Then I really don't need you for anything. I don't even need you to stop killing me. That creates true fearlessness. And most spiritual masters reside in that place, a place of utter fearlessness. So when I begin to look at my own fears and begin to feel them, and when I have an idea that my fears are starting to how do I say this, overcome me, overpower me almost, paralyze me, because all of us have been paralyzed by fear at one time or another. Some of us more often than we'd like to admit. When I get into that place, I take a close look at what do I think I need? What is it that I think that I need here? Because that's what it is. Fear is need announced. So I look at what, what am I thinking that I need? And is it possible that I really don't need that? Could I get along with that? What would happen if I didn't have that? What would happen if I didn't receive that? What would happen if what I think I need, I didn't experience or couldn't experience? See, and then there are two ways that fear manifests itself. The idea that I will not get what I need. I'm not going to receive that. Or the idea that I'm going to lose something that I need. I have it now, but I'm going to lose it. And that's most often presenting itself in human experience, as I observe it, in relationships. It, it presents itself in other ways as well. It's, we have fears around money, fears around power, fears around health, and many other items. But more often than not, almost all the fears that I see people experiencing have to do with relationships of one kind or another, and especially those 
delicate relationships that we call romantic intertwinings of the human experience. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. First, I'm afraid that no one's going to love me, and then I'm afraid if somebody does, I'm going to lose the love. And, and how I solve that, when I do, except when I don't, but how I solve that when I do, how I get into a place of what I want to call spiritual health, is when I understand who I truly am and that I actually don't need the love of another or any other in order to experience who I truly am, in order to experience um, serenity, peace, joy, happiness. Every time I think that my joy is obtainable or that I'm sourced with my joy, that my joy comes from someplace outside of myself, I get into fear. Every time I'm clear that the source of my joy does not exist outside of myself, but is given to me, from me, by me, my fear disappears. And here's the irony of that. I then become much more attractive to people, and what I was afraid of, that people would walk away from me, in fact, doesn't happen. The reverse happens. People are attracted to me, because all people are attracted to other people who are firm and strong, not arrogant, but aware, and reside deep inside of themselves because nobody likes to be needed, because if, if I feel that you need me so much, then my next fear will be I can't give you what you need, and that's why I'll lose you, you see. So people who present themselves to the world as serene and peaceful and joyful and in, innately happy, these are people we say are together, they have it together. These are people who are aware that their happiness, their joy, and their peace comes from within. That's uh, words we hear from every spiritual master. We hear them in all the spiritual books. But that experience is attainable. We can find it. We can go there. And that's, I think, the spiritual journey. That's the path to transformation. That's the movement away from fear. Someone once said to me that there's a great acronym for fear. Feeling excited and ready. Oh, I love that. I had a great teacher say to me one time years ago, call your fears adventure. What a great thought. So I'd like to maybe leave you with that thought for today. Whatever you're afraid of right now, realize a couple of things. One, it's not real. You're making it all up. Two, if the thing that you're afraid would happen actually did happen, you and I would still be here tomorrow. It really would make no difference at all. Unless, of course, you wouldn't be here tomorrow, in which case it absolutely would make no difference at all. Three, if you can call your fears adventure, you'll bring in an energy that will heal the fear, the energy of excitement, the energy of being inspired by life itself. Because life, you see, is a process that informs life about life through the process of life itself. And if you live your life filled with inspiration and excitement, soon there's nothing to be afraid of. And it becomes the great joy it was always intended to be.